What's up, everybody? This is Tano Blast. Since Wednesday, it's been crazy on my notifications over a post that I made. It was just an innocent post comparing the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S, not the X, S. And here's what I post, and I'll go ahead and read it to you. Nothing about the PS5 is next gen, and the size definitely doesn't indicate anything next gen. A system doesn't have to be as large as a skyscraper to be next gen. Take the Xbox Series S for example. The Series S is light years ahead of the PS5 when it comes when it comes to being next gen. When that posted, that same day, nothing, no traction. Not that I was looking for any traction. It was just it was just posted. And that was it. Just like every other post I make. It's just a post that I made like any other post that I make in the, I made in the past. However, this one kind of this one really triggered, really hurt the soft, fragile feelings of the PlayStation 5 fans. I mean, it completely devastated and broke them down to the point of them just attacking with all sorts of comments and replies. Some were funny, some were not. Some had adult content thinking that, oh my God, it, you know, like I've never seen a porn picture or video before. And it's the end of the world for me. And the image is going to be just stuck in my head. I've seen worse. So yes, I'm calling out the PlayStation fans as being very soft and very sensitive over their PlayStation 5. Now, if they're confident that their PlayStation 5 is very next gen, very just high level gaming platform, then they should be confident enough to just look at mine, dismiss it, and move on but they didn't they became little five-year-olds and just started sending me all sorts of messages which to me actually was pretty entertaining because uh you guys really blew up my phone and draining the battery draining the heck out of my battery and good thing i'm always next to a you know power source where i can charge it now the majority of time of yesterday i was driving down from dallas to houston so there was some gap there where I wouldn't look at my phone because I'm driving. So when I take a couple breaks from that, you know, that drive, you know, getting gas or getting something to eat, you know, I'll take a look at my phone and, and I was like, I look at my notifications and they just, they were just a crap load. It was just hilarious. Like it was, it was a good time to take a break and, and get, get a good laugh out of this. So let me continue about how soft they are. They are soft. They're, they're very protective. They're, they're sensitive to the point of what they did yesterday. And why did I compare the Series S to the PlayStation 5 and not the X? Like I've said in, in some replies here, I don't have to hype up the X, the Series X, because we know what it can do. We're well aware that it is a very capable, powerful beast machine that the PlayStation 5 cannot even compete with. So with this post, I was like, you know what? The Series S needs a little attention, just a bit. And so I compared it to the Series S and the PlayStation 5. And I think that's where people went ballistic because it was the Series S. They can't believe that this little guy, this little white box, right, is being compared to the PS5 and then saying it's more of a beast than the PlayStation 5, which is true. Now, of course, people will throw in their comments about it. What about the games? What about this? What about that? Look. You have nothing. You have Demon Souls, which is a remaster. You have Miles Morales, which is a cross-gen game. You tell me what's your next-gen game. You don't have one yet. And the formula of the PlayStation platform, which is over-the-shoulder third-person game, is getting boring. People are, are getting bored with it because it's the same thing, which is different skins. Different skins and different stories. And it's okay. It's okay for Sony because it works for them. Obviously, it has worked for them. They've been successful with it and they just been keep ramming it down your throat and you guys just been eating it up. Another thing is Sony fans make it seem that a person like myself cannot have Xbox. And it's just not me alone. It's a lot of people. Can I have Xbox as their preferred console? They don't understand it and I don't, I don't understand why they don't understand it. As much as they have a preference for PlayStation 5, that's my same feeling towards the Xbox brand. For me, it's superior. The hardware's superior, the software's superior, the services are superior, 
everything that comes along under Xbox, it is much superior. If you don't like what I'm saying, too bad. You don't have to agree with me, but I'm staying it because that's what it is for me and for a lot of people. And it's obvious there's a market for Xbox because they wouldn't, if there wasn't, they wouldn't have lasted this long. And why would anybody want one console, one gaming console? Let's just say for shits and giggles that the PlayStation was the only platform, the only gaming, uh, console, gaming console out there. You still got PC, you got PlayStation, and then that's it. Why would you want that? How boring would that be? How boring would it be for the system that's not getting pushed, not being pushed to innovate, to not think of anything new if there was only one brand? And this goes the same for, for Microsoft. I wouldn't want Microsoft to be the only one out there. I wouldn't want Nintendo to, to, be, to be the only one out there. It is great and fantastic that there's three big players that can provide you unique gaming experiences for all sorts of gamers. You understand that? There's unique experiences for each platform. I don't like PlayStation anymore. I've owned PlayStation 3. I've owned a PlayStation 4. I do own a PlayStation 4 Pro. It's currently at home. I've owned a PS Vita. And, I, and every all of those are gone, except for the PS4 Pro. I still have that one because there are still some games that are gonna come out, like Horizon, that's, uh, that's gonna be playable on the PS4. So that's why I call myself Mr. Neutral, because I do own multiple brands of, of gaming platforms. However, I have no plans whatsoever to even own a PlayStation 5. First, the thing is hideous. It is obnoxious, hideous looking console. And I don't know how anybody with a straight face can say, it looks fantastic. It looks so futuristic. It looks so next gen. It does not. You don't have to agree with me, but I'm just telling you how I feel. It does not. It is hideous. It is rubbish. The only next gen to me when it comes to the PlayStation 5 would be the controller. I haven't felt one yet, but people are raving about the controller. Just too bad they're, they're also breaking just like the PlayStation 5. And that's it. Then you're gonna say, what about the RDNA? You have a Frankenstein version of RDNA. And you're gonna tell me that is the future of Frankenstein? Do you know what happened to Frankenstein in the story? So yes, I don't prefer PlayStation. I've enjoyed it from time to time. Their network is still rubbish. Some of their games are fun, but the majority, well, the third party, I would say, all play better, look fantastic, superior on the Xbox platform, again. You don't have to like what I say. Now, I've never lied about being an Xbox fan. I always post stuff about Xbox. My videos are mainly all about Xbox. I'll throw in a sprinkle of PlayStation here and a sprinkle of, of uh, Nintendo as well, but the majority are all Xbox. And I claim myself as neutral because I've played and owned multiple platforms, but Xbox will always be my preferred, my go-to platform to game on. Again, you don't have to like it because Sony PlayStation 5 is not the end-all be-all. It is just not. So why do I prefer Xbox? Because that's, that's always the question. That's always the question from everybody that's not an Xbox fan. For me, Xbox is a variety of games. They have a variety catalog. It's just not focused on your cinematic third person over the shoulder game like Sony has. Like I said, I don't want to be bored with those type of games. I want variety. And that's what Xbox brings. It brings variety. Then you got Xbox Game Pass, which I know some of you don't like it because, oh, I want to own my game. I want that, that warm and fuzzy feeling of owning the physical game. Look. That shit is getting old. That whole warm and fuzzy feeling is old. Digital is taking over. I've been going digital since the very end, the tail end of the Xbox 360. I don't need to look at my shelf and it's like, oh my God, look at my vast library of games that I bought. Now with Xbox Game Pass, I love it because I have access. I'm not saying I own it. I'm telling you I have access to over 100 games. I may not like all of them because I don't, but there's a, there's a big number of, of games that I do enjoy, especially the first party games. And let's just not get into the whole, what first party game? Yes, 
the first party games. There's a variety of different first party games that I enjoy and, and it's day one into the service, which is amazing because that means I don't have to spend 70 bucks for it or 60 or 50 or whatever the, the, the price is for that one game. I don't. That same money could go to something else. But again, some of you love paying for that one price and saying, well, you got to support the developer. How are they going to make money? Well, I'll tell you, and I've told many others, my concern is not how that developer makes money. My concern is, is how, if I'm going to enjoy their game, if I'm going to enjoy any particular game, that developer, that studio, that company have a marketing team, if they have one, and they have to promote, that's their job. They get paid for it. That's their marketing team. My only concern is whether I like it or I don't. And that is it. Now, you guys, your Sony fans always bitched about, do better. Xbox, you, you should demand better from Xbox. You should demand, demand better. That's all I kept hearing all the time, demand better. And no matter what they do, it's never good enough for you guys. So they bought all these studios. They bought all these studios and still you're not happy. You're not impressed. You don't give them the credit. Well, I do. And, and the future of Xbox, it looks amazing. Looks fantastic with what they're going to pump out. Again. I've never lied about being an Xbox fan. I've been an Xbox fan since the very first one, since the original one. And then Halo came out and it just went, took off from there. I've been an Xbox fan since. Again, you don't have to like it that I'm an Xbox fan. And I don't understand why it irks you so much. It eats you up that someone like myself and many others are an Xbox fan. That's, that's their go-to. I just don't get it. Again, it will be boring if there was only one platform. If there's only Sony, that would be boring. If it was just Microsoft, that would be boring. And if it was just Nintendo, that would be totally boring. Xbox Live, it's always been the superior network. It always has been. And so far, still continue will be the superior network to game on. You don't have to like it again. Another thing I like about the Xbox is the UI. All you guys make fun of the UI because it's from the Xbox One. And like I've said with many things, why try to fix or change something that actually works? It works just fine. There is no need to have some flashy UI, you know, popping with colors and this and that to make it say, hey, look at me, I'm next gen. It's unnecessary. It is not necessary to have some flashy UI to call out, hey, I'm next gen, look at me over here. So the, the familiar of the Xbox GUI is fantastic. It works just fine. It's fluid, it's not loud, it's practical. Simple as that. Now we have the controller. The controller itself is amazing. And it's always has been since the Xbox 360. Ever since the 360 controller came out, it's been the superior controller to game on. It just is. And then the Elite, Elite controllers came out and even more superior compared to the PlayStation. Whoa, you can blow into your PlayStation. Whoop-de-doo. You can blow into it. Gimmicky like the last controller. Gimmicky like the Wii controller. Oh, the batteries. Oh no, you use AA batteries. That is still an issue for you? Because this never bothered me and many others. It never bothered us. I prefer that over some battery that's going to get worn out in that in the PlayStation controller. Now let's go back to games. I love the variety of games that it has. I enjoy them. I enjoy the exclusive games. Yes, I said exclusive because they are exclusive. If you can't play them on your PlayStation, they're exclu exclusive to the Xbox. Simple as that. If you don't get it, you need to go back to school. It's a variety of games I enjoy. I like different flavors. You don't walk into a store and you see uh, one type of cereal. You see a crap load of cereal and then it's like, wow, which one do I want? It's the same thing with, with Game Pass, right? Same thing with, uh, with the games that Xbox has to offer. Not just focused on one genre. Then you have xCloud. If you haven't tried it, you're missing out. It is a game changer. Is it your go-to to game? No, it's not. It's your option to use it. Right now, I'm, I'm in Houston. I could take it fully advantage of the xCloud right now if I wanted to. But just because uh, it's just only because I took a four hour drive, I brought the, the Series S with me so I can game on it. But the xCloud is a big deal and it's, and it's gonna get improved over time. And it's amazing. I don't see how anybody can be against it. Some will say, well, those games are going on PC. Listen, and I'm gonna repeat myself because, because I have to say this every time. I work in the IT industry. I've been working in the IT industry for a long time. I've gamed on PC. I gave up gaming on PC when the Xbox came out. Again, PC gaming is not the end all be all. Yes, 
there's some advantages and I get it. I understand because I've built my own gaming PC before and I still have it. I don't use it, but I still have it. And then you guys cry, well, it's going to PC. No, everybody doesn't game on PC. That's why you have consoles. That is why there's Xbox. That's why there's PlayStation. And that's why there's Nintendo. Because not everyone plays on PC. Not everybody prefers it. And I'm not gonna get into details why they don't prefer it. You should understand why. For the very reason why you play on PlayStation. It's your preference. So if, if a game that's on, let's just say it, an exclusive game that's on Xbox and it's not played on PlayStation, it's an exclusive. Does it play on PC? Sure, but we're not talking about PC. We're talking about consoles. They're two different things. The Xbox ecosystem is amazing. It is awesome. It has always been stable. Sure, it's had its hiccups here and there, just like any other network, work network, your home network, Xbox network, PlayStation network, everyone has their hiccups, but it always has been the superior gaming network. And that's why it's preferred. And that's why PlayStation is asking for help on that front. Now, how can anybody hate and think it's a negative to be able and have access to four generations of Xbox games? From the very first one, the, the original Xbox from 2001 up to the series games, you're gonna tell me backward comp is bad, is terrible. If you can play all those games, all those generations under one box, how is that not fantastic? It is amazing that the system, the e Xbox ecosystem can do that. It's amazing, we've never had that before. And then the Xbox One was able to do it, and now the series can continue on the tradition. That is amazing, that's not a negative, and it's, it's just awesome. It's the same reason why many of you keep your old systems because one day, just one day, you wanna hook it back up and play that one title that really grabbed you. It may not look good, it may not have any online capabilities, but it was a fun game back then, and you still think it's fun today. And the Xbox brands allows you to do that, except you don't have to pull out your old system, plug it up, and hope that it still works. It just simply works on the Xbox hardware. Now imagine the PlayStation 5 able to play all their games since the PlayStation 1. Now let's not bring up PS Now because we all know that's a trash service. Let's just say that the, you can play, you can pop in a disc or get the digital version of a PlayStation 1 and up on your PlayStation 5 and be able to play it flawlessly and natively. That would be amazing for you guys. I would say welcome to the future. It's about time you got here and have fun. Have fun with that awesome feature. You guys will literally break the internet. The internet and the world will just completely implode if you got true backward comp like the Xbox offers. I would just like to give thanks to the ones that replied to my post from a couple days ago, from Wednesday, and just went ballistic because you're, you're the guys encouraged me to make this video right here because this is for you guys because I'm sure some of you want are wanting a reply from me uh, with some of your snarky little comments and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reply to every one of them I'm sure some of you are waiting for that reply I reply to some but not everybody it's just impossible I can't keep up with everybody that's how many that's how many I received and I continue to do so today this Saturday right now I'm looking at my screen and I see notification 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 and it's to the same post from Wednesday because it really ate you up. So to close this out, again, you're not gonna like this. I don't have to hype up the Series X because we know the beast that that console is. But the Series S does need a little attention. It needs, uh, needs to be uh, you know brought to light. It is much better than the PS5. That is it. End of debate, video's over, nothing more. The Series S is superior to the PlayStation 5. If you don't like it, go to your mom. All right, guys, this is Technoblast, Mr. Neutral. Have a great Saturday. Have a great weekend. Stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.